So this is a company that's in the power generation space, and 83% of their power generation comes from renewables, wind and solar. They have the, ten, the 11th largest wind solar field, the 9th largest, um, sorry, the 11th largest wind field, the 9th largest solar field, and it's not, even though it's in a hot area, it's not going to be a hot stock. It's going to be a stock that gives you a solid 5 plus percent dividend yield that should grow in the 5 to 8 percent range for the foreseeable future with, um, with a really solid balance sheet behind it, a great management team behind it. It fits well within the portfolio that I manage, which has an objective of delivering a 5% plus yield and growth on top of that. And this goes back to my earlier comments, which is there are a lot of ways to skin a cat. There are a lot of different ways to make money. This is the way that I'm comfortable making money. So we added Clearway, very excited about the investment. But look at it like a single or a double, not a home run. I hear you. I mean, look, the stock's down 18% year to date, mm -hmm. so perhaps now is the time to, to go ahead and pounce on that. Pharma Jim, you bought AbV. Tell me why. Yeah, so I'm slowly building out a pharmaceutical portion of my portfolio. It's been it's been a hole in the portfolio, uh, and that's been okay because pharmaceuticals, as we know, have underperformed over the last few years. But but it seems like the Democrats don't have their eye on the ball of price control anymore. There's other things they're fighting about, fighting for, and uh, I, I think this is a good time to get invested. So I added Bristol Myers the other day. I'm picking up AbbVie, a great franchise at a, at a good price here, and of course the demographics of aging developed markets really puts the wind in the sail of pharmaceutical development. So just building out that sector of the portfolio. All right. Thank you for that. Joe Terranova, you bought Honeywell again, right? Because you owned this last year at some point or at least in the last couple of years. I, I, I sure did. And part of that Honeywell trade was to sell out of energy. That really was the bigger story. Um, Scott, if you go back to May 21st, the price of oil spot is up 15%. The price of the XLE is unchanged. So an investor, an energy equity investor, is not capturing the positive performance that you're witnessing for the spot price of oil. That's concerning to me. I really want nothing to do with energy here at that price if you're not capturing that performance. President Biden's administration is finally engaged in the conversation for the need to be more barrels and speaking to OPEC Plus. What did I want it to do with that? I wanted to make sure that I stayed to Jenny's point on the value side of the strategy. I found an industrial, but I'm going high up in quality here. That's so incredibly important. Stay high up in quality. Honeywell provides that for you. Very strong balance sheet, and it checks the box on the need to find a value-oriented equity name. Okay, so you sold Suncor because you want to be out of energy, right? I mean, you, you just dissed energy pretty hard. Jim Labenthal, weren't you the one who just told I me? Did. You, you just told me a few moments ago you love energy, right? Me too. Uh, it's, it's one of several sectors in value that I that I am very fond of. Tell yes. Joe why he's wrong. You then. see my Kinder Morgan in my marathon. Tell, tell him why he's wrong. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm up. I will. It's simple. I'm going to repeat myself. Guys, we're, we're, we're losing sight of this. We're early in an economic expansion. And Scott, you said something prescient earlier. It's a long way. Whenever the Fed does start to taper or raise interest rates, it's a long way away. And during that time, this economy is going to continue to expand. People are going to fly. People are going to drive. Cruise ships are going to set sail. There's going to be demand for energy. We're building plants. I could go on and on, but you already heard it. This is an early economic expansion. Okay, I just wanted to give you a chance to rebut that. Speaking of you, Joe, so you sold Nike on June 21st. Stock's up 23% since then. The best, performer, best yep. performing would, Dow component over the past month. And I'd do it again. Why? I, I, um, I had a process, had a process, followed the process. The stock had trust been pulling the process. back. I've owned, uh, you trust Nike. the process? Trust the process. I sure do. How'd that work uh, out? I own stocky... Uh, I own Nike since uh, 2020. I had a very good return on it. The stock was not performing well. It was pulling back. It was below 130. And I was concerned about what the analyst community was going to say on the conference call to John Donahoe as it related right. to the Chinese and some of the concerns there uh, regarding social practices. That was my concern. I would do it all over again. And quite candidly, Scott, the analysts didn't even go there. Yep.